I'm Michael Collins from Granbury, Texas. Immediately after graduating from high school, I joined, uh, volunteered for service in the U.S. Army. After my honorable discharge, I graduated from the University of Colorado in Boulder in the late 60s and began a banking career in my hometown. I was having the uh, unusual experience of serving as a juror on over a hundred trials when I began to see there was something seriously wrong with our judicial system. It wasn't until I began a life of experiencing every parent's worst fear, the death of their child that I made the decision to leave my 20-year banking career so I could create a service to fill an urgent but unmet need of tragedy victims. If a parent finding their little child dead was not traumatic enough, I would learn about an enterprise of lawyers and other public officials who were covering up my child's murder. Because I didn't believe I could provide such a vital service if I became a lawyer, private investigator, police officer, emergency medical staff, or any other of the uh, tragedy professionals. I created a new service which I named Forensic Documentation. It is not regulated by any government agency. Since September 1979, I have successfully provided my service to literally thousands of all types of tragedy victims. After decades of providing my services, having to go places that angels would fear to tread, dealing with every type of corruption, even avoiding being killed, I decided to hang up and retire. Then, a few months ago, I received one more typical email from one more typical person in need. As I tried to uh, come up with something I could tell this person why I no longer provided that service, that little, that little but powerful voice inside said, uh, well, you know, at least listen to the guy. So I called him. When he told me his present condition, which that's normally one of the first things we'll talk about, he had no money, very poor health, had no lawyer, having all of his freedoms being taken away from him for no reason by a corrupt judicial system and more, and I said to myself, so what's new? All of that and more is simply what lawyers do to people. Note, when I refer to lawyers, that includes judges because all judges are merely lawyers in black robes. Because of my parents telling me and our military putting me in a place where I got to see freedom being taken away from entire populations, I knew I had to take far more than a cursory glance at what was going on with this man that called me. Looking over hundreds of internet pages and studying page after page of court documents, I began to ask myself why someone had not gotten some communication with at least one government official. So I began calling on a long list of public officials from Dallas to Chicago to D.C. and only getting a runaround or, or never getting a call back. After reading an article by the assistant bankruptcy trustee Lisa L. Lambert on how it's the mission of the bankruptcy trustee program to promote integrity in that watchdog, friendly watchdog program. I gave Lisa a call and lo and behold she answered. 
That was about two weeks ago. I never knew what I said that prompted her to begin an ongoing dialogue with me that has gone on now for two weeks. I told her that, that I was writing a, that my screenwriter was including in a book that I've already written and published, uh, but is including an issue that she had in her court. And, and she got very interested and uh, she wanted to know if I could provide her with the information that I had. So rather than emailing her 120 pages of my package, she asked if I would mail it to her overnight. For some reason, she was really anxious to get what I had. She sent me an email and said, now this is a very busy, if you, if, if you file for bankruptcy anywhere in Texas, New Orleans, or New Louisiana, or the southern Mississippi, it goes to her desk. But this lady is saying, please let me know when you put your package in the mail so I can look for it. This is 10 days ago, less. And then she said it would be best for me, exactly what she said, it would be best for me if you assimilated all of your information and mailed it. Don't email it. I would feel best if I read, if I had one package so I would know that I wasn't missing anything. I fully expect positive results from my ongoing communication with this lady who's anxious to talk with me. You will notice that I failed to mention, or didn't fail to mention, I didn't mention the first part of the conversation I had with this man when we first met, first talked. When he answered my call, I said, I'm Michael Collins. He said, I'm Jeff Barron. 